G'day, Dylan here. As you might know if you watch my channel, I spend money on software and software I think makes a huge difference to what we do. When you're spending money on actual equipment like telescopes and cameras and whatnot, that's great. But if you don't have good software to process your images, you might not be getting the most out of it. So I'm not afraid to spend money on PixInsight and those sorts of things. The one thing that I have been bottlenecked by is my computer. I've been running an old 2013 MacBook Pro and another smaller MacBook in the observatory, which is fine because the observatory computer doesn't need to be that fast. But when I go to process my images, it's been taking longer to process the images than to actually take them, especially with the RASs, which is F2 high speed imaging. So I might have treated myself a little bit to something that will have an effect on my workflow. Oh <laughs> yeah, 5K 2019 iMac. I know I've spoken about Mac astrophotography on this channel before, and the fact that I use Macs end to end, I love it. Uh, I use my iPhone to check on the computer in the observatory. I use the screen share from the MacBook in the observatory to be able to control it from inside. Apart from the actual acquisition, I'm using Mac and this bad boy has eight cores. So I'm going to do a speed test to show you exactly how much faster this has made my imaging. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. Before I get going, I will be featuring the Celestron Rasa 8 in this video. So this video is sponsored by Bintel, who have just received a bunch of stock of the Rasa 8. So if you're interested in that telescope or you're an Australian astronomer in general and looking for a good vendor, Bintel are the biggest Australian and New Zealand telescope and astronomy vendor. Drop my name and I'm sure they'll help you out. So I've got new computer here, old computer here. I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison, both in PixInsight, about how fast we can process this data I've got over the last couple of nights. And I've already processed this, but I just want to show you the speed difference. PixInsight is made by professional developers and it supports multi-threading, which means that it will properly use all the cores available to it on the new 2019 5K 27 inch iMac Retina. Okay, old computer and new computer are ready to go. I'm going to now run both of them. Here we go, three, two, one. And the 2019 iMac is finished. Two thousand years later. Finally, the old computer is done. Uh, I think that took about 16 minutes or something like that, and this one's about two minutes. Um, amazing. So anyway, I had a whole bunch of other speed tests that I was trying to get into this to show you how long it took for drizzle integration, integration in general. But the point of this video wasn't to show you progress bars. Uh, what I really wanted to get across was how PixInsight is designed for multi-core processors. So it really does make a huge difference to have a good computer. And it's made a big difference to me. I managed to process the image that I took of the M8 Lagoon Nebula over the last couple of nights in about an hour and a half. Now that's something that normally would have taken me four or five hours. Uh, it sounds like a long time, an hour and a half, but believe me, that's quick when you're running all of these algorithms on such a big data set. I'll show you how big that data set is here. It wasn't just meant to be a flex about my new computer. The computer's for work. The astrophotography stuff is just a bonus for me. Uh, I'm going to show you how it turned out. The O3 data was beautiful. The HA data was beautiful. The S2 data was something else. Really wonderful channel in the Lagoon Nebula. How I process these was in SHO, combining as the Hubble palette, which gives us that typically green image. Uh, but then I imported that into PixInsight, inverted it, ran the SCNR process to remove that huge green bias, and then inverted again and ran that SCNR again to remove more of that green. And you end up with a really nice, fairly natural looking orange and blue false color, but still more natural looking than the hugely green Hubble palette. So I'll give you a little look at this finished image right now.
don't get to get more RGB data over the next couple of nights as the moon goes away. And also thank you for the kind comments on the last video I posted where I filmed Anna playing violin in an empty car park garage. Uh, it's really nice that there was some nice comments. I know it's not astronomy related, but it was nice that uh, you guys didn't crucify me completely for posting non-astronomy content on my channel, which I might do from time to time. Uh, also, thank you for everyone who tags me in their photos. I do love seeing them. I won't get to post every single one, but it's nice to hear from people who have watched the channel and found it useful. Other than that, be sure to check out Bintel, especially if you're interested in the Rasa 8. It is an amazing telescope. Uh, that's about it. So remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.